50 ways, shooting step back threes, turning around, looking at this dude on the sideline all the way back, like, I'm really just like, what's he gonna do now? What's up, y'all? Super excited to be back with the OGs. We got DJ. J. Rich up in the building. Uh, are we, we going to DJ? You still got a lot of NBA basketball, but we're going to talk oh, about DJ, on. huh? Before we, before we get it started, we put, can you pull that clip up real quick? Oh, yeah. Quick? You need got your... Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Ooh. We're going DJ ASAP. ASAP Rich. Come on, man. ASAP Rich. Yeah, my artist pick right there. Hey, I appreciate you coming on, dog, man. Thank you for everything, man. I know you got on but as your OG man I'm always proud of you how far you've come mm -hmm. but um this right here tell it tell us before we get into basketball tell us about this because I understand that you serious with this this is real you got to if anybody out there my dog got a show at the Soho <laughs> on the 22nd yeah at the Soho at the Soho yeah. house I know Titty bar, nah, the dog at the Soho. Had the nah, boot, you feel me? Titty bar. Yeah, nah. it ain't the Snooty Fox. He had the Soho. Yeah, titties are welcome, though. <laughs> Always welcome. Oh, DJ. I ain't say that. I ain't say D that. DJ. I ain't say that. You. <laughs> DJ. Tell us about that, Jay Rich. Yeah, how, you, how you get into that, man? We gonna start with that. We gonna go backwards, but we. Gonna, I want to talk. I'm intrigued by this because right. this is hard. This Ain't no joke, right? man. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So you. Hold on, we gonna wait for Ed, Mike to get off with his. Well, I'm, I'm looking up DJ Titty real quick. Hold on. <laughs> My face gonna pop up. <laughs> Damn, it's, it's Jay Rich. <laughs> <laughs> now tell us how long? How, how did you take classes for? Did you just start teaching yourself? Uh, like, how, how did it go? Nah. So you you both of y'all know like when you get to be a professional and you don't have hobbies, uh, it's like. Idle time is the devil's so playground. So much idle time. Idle time is the devil's playground. So much. Everybody idle. at home, find something to do. Yeah, <laughs> gonna end up doing something you ain't got no business doing. <laughs> For real. I so, love you, D. It's yeah, the devil's I, playground. I started teaching myself probably like my third year. You remember we'd be on the team yeah. flights and I have my little, my little, little board. Carry with you in a little. Yep. I had a portable. Table. I just taught myself. So you self taught. You never took classes. So I did go to YouTube University in uh in a bubble actually. I brought my I brought my controller. YouTube University. Oh, oh yeah yeah yeah. Hold on hold on hold on. You never heard that? Say? Oh, rewind. Is that, that a real thing rewind or is that, that what you just called it? Nah, they say like when you learn stuff on YouTube, they be like, I went to YouTube University. Okay. Oh. Just random. Not, not a real school. I, thought, I, thought I wish I could have went I to YouTube you University instead of University of Florida. <laughs> Schools, you can go to university, YouTube University now. We Come can do on. that. Nah, nah. And I learned, yeah, I learned. I taught myself. I'm still learning. I got a lot of That's mentors dope. too. That's dope. That's another thing. I got a lot of mentors that like help me and teach me. Oh, you name some of your mentors. So uh my first one, my boy named Yusuf. He was a DJ at Wall. Okay. The W. And that's the first person I really saw that kind of got me interested. Okay. Um I talked to Irie about it a little bit. Irie, shout out Irie. Oh, home team. Out. Um, M dot M dot shout out M dot guys. whole team. Um, some of my friends are twins. They're named Coco and Breezy. They're okay. on an international house tour right now. They in and out. Um, who else? Some of my a couple a couple of my other boys, uh, Deji and Eddie. They're, they're called Paper Water, DJ duo down here. They're actually gonna be with me on the twenty second. Hey, so. hey, now all boys side. I was in Europe with D Wade. I think we was in Spain. Yeah, we was in one of these countries. You know, OG travel international now. Oh, big, uh, big that's time. how I move. You feel me? Okay. But uh, the dude, dog, the crazy. I mean, the, the 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 we were outside, but the event was at a hotel. But the pool people was upstairs looking down, and you couldn't even see this face. He had a big ass thing on his head. What the DJ with the thing? That Where's the old his, marshmallow? Yeah, Wasn't marshmallow. marshmallow? That mother. They paid that. They pay had him. the jumping. He had big ones. Had the party. Jump, <laughs> yeah, dog. I don't, yeah, and, and yeah, listen, I wasn't on no drugs, but I was, I was bopping to that. <laughs> Europe, was, Europe is different. Party yeah, in Europe is different. it was a vibe. But I say that to say this though, he was a star. Like nobody was oh. tripping off me and Dwayne. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, yeah. They was all, they was tripping off the buddy on the stage with the marshmallow on his head. Yeah. <laughs> how much? 
Yo, with all <laughs> how much do people get paid to DJ? Uh, what's the, what's the Vegas, like DJ, the Marshall so, dude. Uh, what's the other? They pay. They pay. One, of, one of my boys, his name is Kygo, uh, another international DJ. He's from Norway. Okay. He had a residency at Excess in Vegas, and if I had to guess, he was probably making about. 300 stacks a weekend, 200 stacks a weekend. 300 stacks a weekend. For the whole summer. And you gonna get- For the whole hey, summer. He was taking so a PJ how many back- Hey, hold up, hold up. You gonna get this, you gonna get this I'm gonna go to YouTube University. You see me, I'm, DJ, like I'm, I'm all, listen, I'm already in my- He gonna be out. <laughs> <laughs> Shake what your mama gave ya. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you know me, my <laughs> gonna be all booty shaking <laughs> twerk I'm from Miami. We is base city. Uh, we hey, need two live crew. DJ, DJ two and Titty and DJ Booty over there. Right. <laughs> DJ U D done it again. <laughs> Shake it. Oh God. Nah, seriously though, man. Um, we can get into that. We, I just wanted to get in that, but obviously, when you came to the Heat from Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Yeah, I know. I know. Ugh. I know. I know. Ugh. But it's the SEC though. I was on no, no, no. SEC. Rocky and Top it. down in the Tennessee Hills. I don't even know that song. Yeah, I know you they, don't. I no, you know it. We sang it. We was whooping y'all. Rock, rock, rock top, crack. No, crack, 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 crack. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be honest with you. D, when we played against Tennessee, they didn't play that song very much, so we don't know it. Well, I never won. Yeah, okay. I never won two places. I never won. We never won in Rupp Arena, and we never won in Tennessee. Tennessee is a tough place to play. Actually. It's a tough place. It's to a play. very tough. That's place. a tough place to play. So he talked. He talked about, and we'll get to this. this Ugly orange Tennessee in a minute. I'm, I live in. I live in Memphis, so a lot of Tennessee fans. So they'll love. Yeah, this. you right in my neck of the woods. But. But when you did get drafted here, you had obviously LeBron was gone, but you UD, D Wade, CB. Talk about that as a rookie walking into that, and obviously expectations of even with you know that team was still freaking really good. Yeah, you came so, in with justice, correct? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so, mm. so, 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 so talk about justice. that. Give, give me some. Give me some. Give me some stories, man. Give some stories for the people back home what, what are that are listening to about yeah. about that team. I mean, yeah. First of all, you know we were stacked that yeah. year. So yeah, we had a damn good squad. So, even with even with losing Bron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I got I get drafted. Um, you probably remember this. There was no roster spots. First of all, mm -hmm. so I go to summer summer league. Like okay, like I'm I'm not expecting a contract. I'm not expecting to like make camps. I'm not even looking at D Wade and all those guys. I'm like okay, I'm gonna just try to go here play well. Maybe I'll like. You know, get on somewhere. I'll go. Yeah, you're trying to get on the other 29 yeah. teams. Yeah, somebody, my, somebody. Hope. Yeah. That's what my pops was telling me. Only one team got to like you. Yep. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than five million members. It is the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats for a shot to win up to a hundred times your cash. That was not an error. That is a hundred times your cash. If you're trying to make some money this summer, like everybody should be, Prize Picks got you covered. You can turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports team this summer. You can make a Prize Pick lineup in as little as 60 seconds. You just need to pick more or less two to six players, stat projections, and you're locked in. The finals just means more on Prize Pick, and so does star players. You get boosted payouts on select basketball stars that you won't find anywhere else. Download the app today. Use code OGs for the first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today and use code OGs for the first deposit match of up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Fellas, let's be real. Most guys would wear t-shirts every day of their lives if they could. The problem is, most t-shirts are not acceptable to wear at work or out on a date night. Today's sponsor, Cuts, has finally changed that. Cuts t-shirts have such high quality wrinkle-free, and so comfortable that you can look like you're dressing up even when you're dressing down. Yeah, you heard that, wrinkle-free. You never have to substitute comfort for fashion ever again. There's a good reason Cuts Clothing is your trusted fashion brand of professional athletes. If you've ever watched your favorite basketball, football, or baseball team entering the arena, there's a good chance you've seen them sporting Cuts. And the best part? Cuts Clothing is built to last. Their durable construction means you'll be enjoying your favorite shirts and pants for years to come making them the smart investment for your wardrobe. For a limited time, our listeners get 20% off of your entire order if you use the code OGs at checkout. That's 20% off your order, cutsclothing.com with your promo code OGs. Support our show and tell them we sent you. Experience the perfect blend of style and comfort with Cuts Clothing. 
Today's episode is proudly brought to you by our guys at Morgan & Morgan. It's America's largest personal injury law firm. They started out here in Florida 30 years ago and now are helping people across all 50 states. Morgan & Morgan is always for the people and have your back when it comes to fighting to get you full and fair compensation. As athletes, we have faced our fair share of injuries. That's why we know how difficult it is to get back out there after an injury. The team and the support behind you matter. And submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is free and easy. It just takes eight clicks or less from the comfort of your own couch to get started. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash the OGs or dial pound law, that's pound 529 from your cell phone. That's forthepeople.com slash the OGs or pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. This, my friends, is a paid advertisement. So I get there, I play well, so they make moves, I make the roster, and <laughs> I remember one of the first days we were playing pickup, D-Wade had just got back in town, and I never seen him. I never seen him. I'm like, okay, like we're playing, and I see somebody – we play like a game already. I see somebody walk in the gym in, with nothing on but a pair of bright blue tights. Sound about right. <laughs> <laughs> like, just tights. Yes, and I'm like, he's not going to play. What like is he finna do? Yeah, well, you know. Why is he walking in here like that? Where are his pits? <laughs> this ain't Oklahoma no more, bro. No, it ain't. It do a little different down here. He's like playing, he's like posting people up, like just with his tights on. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, ah, <laughs> I hope this ain't what it's gonna be like every day. Like, this is crazy. Hey, listen, man, my dog never miss an opportunity to have a fashionable moment. <laughs> he's man. never gonna, he's never gonna miss an opportunity to have a fashionable moment. I learned a lot about being confident in your fashion and yeah. in your swag. Yeah. The best thing yeah. he ever gave me is no matter what the f you put on, own it. <laughs> That's own exactly it. right. Own that. That's exactly own right. Own that. Wear that. So he would get buckets and bright blue tights. The man was getting buckets, like <laughs> buckets, dog, like, like professional buckets. I'm, uh, I'm trying to focus, and I'm just like, all right, bro, well, I guess this is what it's like. Did you have to guard him? Yeah, I had to guard him. <laughs> I caught a couple of those buckets. You see him, like, you see him along came Polly. Yeah, we have when, when the dude is like, when, was it Steve Carell's garden? Oh, guy? man. It, and his like, face is just like all like. Let it rain. Like, yeah, yeah, his yeah, face yeah, all over. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's what it looked like on the court with D Wade. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I love D Wade. Another, I will say, Chris Bosch bought me my first nice suit. Really? Mm. I was like, so I actually, when I when I had my press conference, I had a suit that didn't fit, and my mom the night before had to like <laughs> sew, like take in the pants and hemming them so up. I was like, nah, I can't be wearing. I can't have my pants like it used to be. Like. <laughs> I want them to be, you know, the fit where it go yeah, over the yeah, ankle. Yeah, my yeah. joints was damn near touching yeah. the floor. <laughs> I'm like, you got to fix this. And so CB, you know, bought me my first three suits. Mm. And so I really CB appreciate him for that. Man, CB nah. was a man. He's he a man. A man. He's a man. And, and that half season with him, you know, he's so knowledgeable. You know what I'm saying? And he did a good job of, you know, taking us under his wing, taking me under his wing, and just kind of like showing me the ropes, watching film. And I never, you know, talk about that a lot, but you know, yeah. he he really like did a lot for me even before I was playing, because you know I didn't play yeah. the first 40 games that year. You know, we going to Indiana one game. I don't know if you remember this, but we coming out of ha at halftime, and I'm in a suit this game. Mm -hmm. And I remember they coming out of halftime, and him and Amari was like, "Hold on, Rook, hold on, Rook." And I'm like, "What?" And they're like. Stay back here and order us some chicken wings for after the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, who do I call? Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do that. Yeah. He's like, well, well, just make it happen. Yeah. And Stat like hand me a couple hundred dollars. And I'm in the back calling all these places. I'm like, bro, I don't know how to do this. Like, they're going to be pissed after the game. I spend the whole third quarter and like half the fourth quarter get trying chicken to get wings. these wings ordered. <laughs> I go back out. I'm sitting there. I'm living vicariously through justice at this point. So like after every game, like we talking, I'm like, yo, how was it? Like blah, blah, blah. 
And I'm like begging the coaches to send me to the G League by this point because we're like 25 games in and I'm yeah, you just want to bump. I'm on a scout team every yeah. day, which is cool. Like yeah. I'm learning, but yeah. come on. And uh, he's like, P they're running the same play for PG in Indiana where he's coming off that double stagger mm -hmm. to his right hand. He shoot the three if you go under and get into his bag if you don't. And he coming to the sideline like, yo, this dude is too good, bro. I can't guard him. He, I'm looking up. He has like 36 mm. points. PG, prime like, PG with it. Oh. Lee, it was, it was. Indiana PG was crazy. So, when did you get your first opportunity then? So, well, I started my third game because D Wade's son swallowed a marble. Damn. Oh, Actually, yeah, I remember that. You remember that? Yeah, yeah he, he wasn't able to, he wasn't I didn't able know to that. come. That and, day. and I didn't know I was even going to wear a jersey until the pregame meeting 30 minutes before. So I'm like sitting there. I just did like a crazy warm up. I'm like, you know, I'm saying like I'm not hooping. Suppose like Jay Richard starting. I'm like, all right, bet. So I go in. I have eight quick ones. Mm. Quick ones. <laughs> hit a three from the corner, and I hit another three. And I drove the lane, and then I traveled right after that and got taken out. But it was a good start to the game. And yeah. after that, I didn't play until probably like game like 42, three, when Goron and uh, Bano both got hurt. Uh. And so I had to start against the Pistons and I was matched up with Steve Blake. And I remember Bosh. Miami. Hooper. My dog. Hooper. He gave Miami me 20, he gave me 20 that game. Mm -hmm. That and, happens. Uh, it happens. And uh, I remember I went under on a screen and he hit a three and Chris Bosh went upside my head so fast. I remember that. Look. Yeah, I remember what that. What you doing going under the screen? I'm I like, remember that. Ah, I remember that. Report. You remember that? And when CB yell at you, it's different. No it's doubt. It's so quiet. Yeah. So it's like zero yeah. to 100 on your ass yeah. real Boom. quick. Yeah. You ain't even see that coming. I'm like, oh. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I remember that. And then the next game, we play the Warriors at home. And this is 2015, yeah. 16. So Gogi comes back that game, but I come off the bench. And my first matchup is Steph. And I'm like, mm. bro. But you know, you know me. Yeah. I walk in. I Put my, I chest him up as soon as I get in the game on the inbound. I'm just pushing him. I'm like, yeah, you're not doing that tonight. Not on me, brother. About 36 minutes later and, and 42 Steph points later. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to a lot of people too. Yeah. I'm, in the locker, I'm in the locker room like, nah, this can't, this can't be what it's like. I'm taking my stuff off. Like, this, nah, this ain't it. Because you, you was the all-defensive team in the SEC. Uh, you I was a defensive All-American. A defensive All-American. He was a defensive All-American. So yeah. he used to getting stops playing both yeah, ends of the I mean, floor. Yeah, but – Work on Steph? Nah, I didn't. And then we seen the Wizards, John Wall, mm. 2015. Ooh. It was it was a tough first couple. Is he the fastest you ever seen with the ball? I ain't gonna lie, he's uh he's 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 way up there. I, I strained my groin one time, one game. Uh, the same year they came back later that year, and I I was getting minutes by this point, and I picked him up full court, and. You know, I'm used to that. Like I'm, I'm, I can keep up with pretty much anybody. Yeah. He must have hit me with a hezzy, and you know that change of pace. Mm. Boy, I must have tried to turn my hips. <laughs> Next time out, I'm, I'm looking at the trainer like, no, I can't uh. go. I can't go back in. It's over. Strain my groin trying to keep up with him. Yeah, that usually happens when Mike play defense. All the, you know. Huh? You strain your groin when you play defense all the time. <laughs> she. <laughs> What's up, everybody? It's that time of the year, the best time of the year. The playoffs have been awesome. I know everybody's ready for the NBA Finals, and if you want those last-minute tickets, Game Time has you covered. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down closer it gets to tip-off. My favorite part about the Game Time app is the last-minute deals. We save up to 60% off by buying last minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and all things across the board. And Game Time has the lowest price guarantee, or Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code OGs for $20 off your first purchase. So terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code. Spell out OGs for $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed.
What's up, y'all? I don't know about you guys, but this year has gone fast. We're almost halfway home. What's something you're proud of in 2024 so far? What's something you still want to accomplish this year? When life goes so fast, it's important to take a moment to celebrate your wins and make adjustments to the rest of your year. Therapy can help you take stock of your progress and set achievable goals for the next six months. We all get overwhelmed sometimes. Even myself as an OG who's used to giving advice, I still need advice at times. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out the brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So take a moment, visit betterhelp.com slash OGs today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash OGs. So then after that, obviously, you know, a couple of years go by, um, then you get traded. Yeah. You, well, first you go to Philly. Yeah. How was that? I, and let me just, just tell you this, like, even though you was drafted in the second round, you came in, there was no draft, there was no roster spots. You kind of fell in with the undrafted. You was kind of over there with us a little bit. You was kind of with the undrafted guys, and yeah. you know we going upstairs playing one on one, two on two, yeah. and just building that culture mm -hmm. of guys that are not in the rotation. So even though he was drafted in the second round, he kind of fell over in the in the undrafted area with the yeah. with the have nots. But yeah. but to touch on that though, even hearing this, right? Like that's why I think it's so important for all these young kids that are coming through. And that's again an OG advice. Like it doesn't matter where you get drafted, what happens. It's a matter about being ready because it yeah. take it take like. You yeah. can never control D Wade's son swallowing a marble. Yeah, true. Like two point guards going down. Yeah, you're gonna get an opportunity if you if you do your job, you prepare and you yeah. practice, you do the shit that you're supposed to do. You're gonna get an opportunity. It's a matter what you do with that opportunity, right? Like mm -hmm. you get quick first eight points. All of a sudden, in the back of the mind, coach is like, oh, okay, yeah, and yeah. Then you just stay prepared. We man, we talk about that shit all the time. It's, that was ne our it's life. never gonna be ideal it's either. Never, that was it's our never life. gonna be ideal. It's never no. it's never gonna be the day you woke up feeling great. No, I guess team. No. It's always going to be one day you woke up groggy and you got to go against Steph. <laughs> you saw it tonight, Jay Rich. God damn. <laughs> hey, but you got to make a man. Long night. Long night. You ain't expect to play. Okay, Jay Rich, you start. You got Steph. Let's get it. It's always that one of those all, For all young kids, that's, that's the most important thing because you're going to get an opportunity at some point or you hope you do. Yeah. And when you do, you I mean, you're either ready for it or you're not. Yeah. We talk about the Philly stuff because I'm, I'm interested in that. So. Yeah, well, how, how did you did you get a call? How was that? And I'm gonna just tell you this. Obviously, I hated to see you go. Obviously, the relationship that you know we do, it, it, I don't have an impact on the business side. Yeah. But you understand the relationship we built. We had our own little conversations. We had our own lingo. For sure. That ain't for everybody at home. For sure. We speak, we speak the same language. <laughs> yeah, you, you know do. what I'm saying. So I hated to see him go. Yeah. But uh, talk about that. Did you get a phone call? Like how that went? Nah. So actually, I was I was at the crib, and I was here in Miami. I just bought my house. Damn. And, yeah. I'm telling you, that's, that's, that's the just curse. We just see no, no. me say the same no, no. thing. That's, mm -hmm. It's the absolute curse. You buy your house, your first house you buy, you get traded. It's yeah. why it's an unbelievable curse. My house like two months before it happened. So you got to understand, he's intrigued by all this trade because he never got traded. Lucky dog. Yeah, so he, he's, he's, he's one of the rare breeds, you know what I mean? Like, Big time. So go ahead. He want, he's really intrigued by this because he doesn't know what it's like. I do. By the way, I'm, I'm with you. I know what it's like, so go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't afford to pay for my house because I was giving up millions to stay here. Man, get your, oh, that's pretty funny though. Yeah, I, was, I couldn't afford to pay for my house. I was giving up millions to stay here. All right, hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. You've been to that big ass house he got out there talking about you can't afford to pay for a house. I ain't been over there yet. Oh yeah? Hey, Rich kid ain't been to my house. I've been to his house though. He has you can run. You can run seven games of hide and seek at his house. You ain't finding nobody. I heard them dogs be running wild over there. Yeah, I got Animal Kingdom. For <laughs> sure. Yeah, let's, sure. let's go back to Philly, man. We're going to get a yeah, side track. Sure. All right. Talk to me about Philly, uh, though. Yeah, so. You got the crib chilling. Yeah, I, and, and all my homies is there. Like, the girls are there. We have oh, them. Oh, cooling. man. But, yeah. It might. Oh, the spot is jumping. It's, yeah, cool, oh. cooling, bro. What's your contract situation at the time? Uh, I was on a four for $42 million. So Nice deal, coach. Congratulations. Super nice. Max deal from my, where man. I was at. Feeding family. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Yeah. And uh, so my agent calls me and says, yo, so you just got traded. I'm like, oh man, to where? He's like, Philly. I'm like, okay. So Tobias calls me. Mm. Cause you know, I knew Tobias from Tennessee. Tennessee yeah. And he like kind of showed me around when I got there cause he was leaving when I was coming in. So he calls me, he's like, yo, what's good bro? You know, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be crazy. You know, I'm excited. You know, Tobias talk. Yeah. So we talk and then Brett, Brett Brown calls me. 
He's the same thing. Josh, I'm so excited to work with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, what's up, hey, coach, bro? What's up, coach? Great dude, by the way. Yeah. We, I'll, I'll get into that in a minute, yeah. too. And, um, yeah, so I, I go up there, you know, Ben, Joel. Joel loves soccer, so me and him okay. hit it off, like, immediately. You know what I'm saying? Ben likes video games, so we have something to talk about, too. And Ben kind of speaks our language also. Okay. And uh, so... It was good, you know what I'm saying? It was um, with Brett, you know, we had our, our our up and down, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I kind of felt like some things, you know, could could have been handled a little better while I was there. And um, so we kind of had our, like, our little rift. Yeah. But, I mean, that happens when you're a professional. Part, part so you want to win. It's part of it, you know yeah. What I'm saying? He want to win, I want to win, and we just want to figure out the best way to get that done. And... Um, yeah. Oh, we went to the bubble while I was with them too. Yeah. And yeah, you played your ass off in the bubble. I yeah, remember that. I, I had a couple of good ones in there. Yeah, you played your ass but, off in the um, bubble. That was an interesting time. It didn't got traded. It didn't got but I, I, I kinda asked. I kinda wanted. Oh, you won it out. I always wondered why they traded you after the way you played in the I bubble. Did. I, okay, like, so now it all makes sense because you played your ass off in the bubble and got traded. I was like, yo, what the f yeah, it that was. It didn't make sense to me. It, it was just some things so there. Me. Yeah, I did. I met with uh, Elton Brand mm -hmm. in the bubble a few times, and okay. he was he was great about it though. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't like, you know, upset or nothing. We just sat man to man and was mm -hmm. like, you know, like let's let's figure it out. Mm -hmm. And um, so, uh, looking back at that, are you are you are you glad you did that? I mean, hindsight. That's some grown man. Know, that's that, but that's some grown man. No, no, 100%. You know that's saying? why I'm asking. Like, it's, it's, it's yeah. easier. Like, at 44, I'll answer a question a lot different yeah. than I did at 26. Yeah, right? that's so true. That's true. I'm asking, like, um, in high, like looking back at How old are you again, Killer? Huh? How old are you again? Shut your ass up. Yeah. <laughs> older than me. I can, <laughs> hey, I can barely hear him. Older than me, America. <laughs> I can't are, hear you. Things are slowing down. <laughs> no, but uh, so looking back at it, though, I mean, because you play great in the bubble. Yeah, yeah. Like, at the end of the day, all you, as players, you want to end the season on that playing well. And then yeah. it's like, okay, the decisions you make after that reflect it. So, are yeah. you? Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think it could have went either way because the after that season, the coaching change happened. So, they hired Doc. But this was after I already had meetings and everything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, my mind was already made up by that point. I was just, I was frustrated. I was kind of over it. And, um, yeah, so I ended up going to Dallas because I knew Luca since he was, what, 15, mm -hmm. 16, mm -hmm. and we was training. Oh, so you knew Luca prior to that? Yeah, yeah, oh. I knew. And that's, we talked about it. I was like, all right, like, let's, let's get it. You know okay. what I'm saying? He a bad by the way. A boy can hoop. That's a bad white boy, for real. Mm. And, um, yeah, so I go there, and it's kind of a little bit of the same thing, a little bit. It's, it was kind of hard for me to play there because, mm -hmm. you know, me, I like to have the ball. I like yeah. to, you know, move around and rock and run. And they, at the time, we were kind of playing at a slow pace, and we had kind of a lot of guys, a lot of mouths to feed on that team, yeah. a lot of ego. So, you know, that's never easy, especially when you got a guy that can go get 30 every yeah. night and do whatever he wants. So yeah. it's like you kind of got to fall in line. And, you know, I had some other off-the-court stuff going on around that time too. So I had a lot of stuff going on in my mental. But, uh, yeah, Dallas was great. I was close to home. So, you know what I'm saying? Yep. My parents got to come down. Yep. It was nice. I got to go home on off day every now and then. It was cool. And then I go to Boston. I talked to, to Ime because I worked with Ime in Philly. And so we got okay. tight in Philly. Okay. And um, he was like, what do you think? Like, you can come here, come off the bench. I'm like, I never came off the bench before. But I'm like, you know, I, I like money. I like winning. So, fine. Go there. So did you ask? To, to move from Dallas? I didn't ask to move from Dallas. Okay. And I kind of talked to the front office in Dallas and they were like, nah, we're not gonna make any moves, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And, you know, a couple weeks later, like they started making moves. It's like, you ain't buy no house this time though. Nah, 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 I didn't, <laughs> I didn't buy a house. And really like the, I'm, I, I like having these conversations about the trading stuff because it's in, in, people have no idea what it's like when you get traded. It's, Man. Like you don't yeah. know, so. Yeah. But like going in, going into it though, like you God always damn killer. Well, you don't. I also don't know how it's like to get drafted. <laughs> oh, good point. That's, okay, so we even. Fair, I do, I do. I'll, even. I'll, I'll do. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> damn. <laughs> wow. See that shit, America? Shots have been fired. <laughs> but I'm saying like, because everyone's like, well, they're unhappy in their situations. Yeah. To a point, but that doesn't mean it's gonna be good the next place you go. You yeah, know what I mean? Like true. I always tell you, like even when you're advising and doing these things, like you got to be careful. Like, oh, I'm not happy here, but. You 
Ron gets sent mean, to Boston. And you have no control where you're getting traded. <laughs> you can, huh? Ron gets sent to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, and by the way, Boston, he will be in town next week, Boston. Ooh, wee. And what? Nothing. Okay. I got you. I Ooh, I got wee. You. I go to jail first. <laughs> <laughs> Come with that if you want to. I'll be in jail in Boston. <laughs> I don't want that. Yeah. Everyone no, call hey, Nobody wants that. With that. Nobody wants that. that. Hey, but let's, let, before we move on to that, I got to, because you brought him up with the NBA Finals coming up. Luca. Yeah. Who do you got? Ooh. Cut straight to it, huh? Mm -hmm. Luca, who you got? That's straight crazy. to it, huh? Uh, we get, yeah, we'll get back to your Boston story in a minute. Who you got? Yeah. Oh, this is going to lead to the Boston stories. I'm going probably, I'm probably, ah, to probably take Boston. You got Boston? Ooh. Yeah. That damn it, Jay Rich. Why? I don't really care. I want to I want to I want to know. I don't have a preference. So this no, is no, no, non biased. Yeah, yeah, this is a very non biased. Yeah. It's just what you see on the floor. Yeah, like. So why? I just feel like Boston, across the board, man, like across the board, if you line it up, they have a few more positive matchups. You know what I'm saying? Dallas is a great team. They have great players. They have Luka Kyrie, who are having a, a all-universe season. You know what I'm saying? Um, but defensively and in, the tra in transition, and when it really comes down to it, I think Boston has a guy. And KP's coming back, so you know what that's going to do to the floor. Yeah. But they're going to switch that. They're going to have to. Mm. I think it's going to be a good series, honestly. I don't, have I don't think it's going to be a wash either way. Well, where, who y'all taking? I got Dallas. Why you say that? I think it's going to be a four-minute game, and I like Luka and Kyrie closing games. I feel that. I like Dallas, too. Mm. I mean, and just offensively, obviously, what Luka and Kyrie can do. But I think defensively, um, it's a lot of pick and rolls. We, we know how Boston play. There's going to be either a lot of pick and rolls or a lot of isolations. It, and they can guard both because they can put them in switchable matchups. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to really, in my opinion, going to come down to, and, we, and we, it's always said because we are part of the little 12. Yeah. It's going to it's gonna come down to PJs, yep. Derek Joneses. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Because, <clears throat> in my opinion, Tatum and Brown are excellent basketball players, yes. obviously. <clears throat> Luka and Kyrie – based on the way they run their offense and the way they do stuff, are going to generate more whooping shots for their other guys. I feel that. And just because pick and roll. They play in a million pick and rolls, yes. and they're going to have to put two on the ball, and it yes. starts that roller coaster. Mm -hmm. yes. And once that roller coaster gets it going, those guys are going to be wide open corner shooters yep. and wide up at the rim. Mm -hmm. Are they going to make it? Now, if they don't make the shot, like, because we, we've talked about it a million times on here, and we've lived it. It's Luka and Kyrie and Tatum and Brown are both going to win you games. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the little 12 that has to win one of those games. Which one's it going to be? And I just feel like they're going to have wide open spot shots in Dallas. I, just, I, just, I like Dallas winning it in six or seven. I feel that. Yeah. That's a good well, take. You, I mean. I agree. I mean, yeah. I think I like Dallas in, 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 in six. Six. I like Dallas in six. Okay. Um, and, and like I said, it's more so the defense. Both sides are going to be able to score. But defensively, I just think Dallas can switch, match up a little bit more. I think if you put, you know, PJ Washington on Porzingis, then you take away that player, mm -hmm. you just switch that. Mm -hmm. You take away that throwback because we tried to zone it. Yeah. He's seven foot four yeah. and he's shooting from 28, 29 yeah. feet. It's impossible. So he's two, three feet behind the yeah, line. No. So trying to close that on a zone, you're never getting to that. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So the best thing you can do is switch that. And I think if you can put a PJ Washington on him, you can switch that. You can also guard Derrick, I'm sorry, you can also guard Tatum with Derrick Jones Jr. Yep. Mm -hmm. so I know Tatum likes to ice on that elbow a lot. Mm -hmm. In the Indiana series, he wouldn't even put it on the floor. He'd just shoot over, turn around, jab you a little bit, put that shoulder in just to create just a little bit of space yeah. and get that shot up. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be able to do that over DJ. You know what I'm saying? So I just look at a lot of those matchups. And, yes, you got a guy like Lively who can't stop Tatum, but in a switchable matchup with enough space, he can contest a he, shot and make it tough. He, he can move his feet. Six seconds. Yeah, he can move his feet. He can in a switchable matchup. He can make it make a tough shot. Yeah, he and can. Gafford as well. They're athletic enough where they can make you make a tough shot. Yeah, you Gafford's know what I'm saying? playing well too. Yeah, so if He's you got to make right tough right shots right. for 48 minutes all night, I'm going with the team that's going to make you have to make tough shots for 48 minutes. That's just my mentality as a defender. I agree yeah. with that. So I'm with y'all on that one. What year were you with Luca then? For him. What year was it for him? I want to say was it his three. His third year in the league? I think it was three. Did you see this, Luca? I mean, I, I mean, yeah. he was killing that's a great question. Year, yeah. That's a great question. No, he, yeah, he was, he was crushing people. What makes that. him different? Because he's, to me, he's got freaking, like, he got a, like, the bigger the moment, the better it is. Like, he's elite. And UD touches on this all the time. I actually, guy does an amazing, amazing job on ESPN and TNT, by the way. 
but good plug. No, he does. He does. He does a great job. And you, and, he, and he said something. He says I I try not to listen to him, but I yeah, listen. No, I said I know what you're gonna say, and I was right. Say it again. No, no. And I listened to him, and and he was right. He was, in my opinion, he was right. Mm -hmm. Is that the narrative on Luca and Luca teams was, it's gonna be hard for a ball dominant dude like him to win a championship. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now he's picking Dallas because he's seeing like what that is. So when you saw him, was it a was it hard to play with him? Mm -hmm. And B, did you see him being able to carry a team to a champ yeah. championship? Yeah, I think, I think that at the time I got there was when he was like ascending, like yeah. starting like to ascend like crazy though, you know what I'm saying? And so I think he was figuring out still like a, a balance of when to kick it up, when to get off it, and when to get in my bag, you know what I'm saying? And you know, that's for a superstar like him, you know, you, they get that, they get that leeway and you kind of got to let him figure it out. So for me, it was kind of tough, but I mean, he made some huge shots. When like, we went to Boston that year, he had like 27 at halftime, <laughs> at halftime, bro. We walking back to the locker room like, Who's yeah. Who's Marcus Smart? Yeah, everybody, the, the crowd, everybody. <laughs> the crowd. <laughs> the crowd. <laughs> By the way, I love the way Luca talks to the crowd. So do I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. He, no he, talk, he talked he to everybody, a, too. He got a potty mouth. I love it. He do. Hey, hey, you said something there, though. I want people to make sure to hear it. Like, you said it wasn't easy for you. Yeah. I tell people all the time, we were completely blessed. We played, with, to me, two of the best players that ever played the game of basketball. Yeah. Three of them. Chris, yeah. put yeah. CP in there. Hell yeah. Being a role player, or whatever you want to call us, on teams like that, it's a blessing. It's unbelievable. They don't know how hard it is, though. No. Yeah. Ball dominant guy, like they're they're supposed to have the ball in their hands. They create everything. They yes. make, their, their job is to make me better, yeah. make you better, make him better, right? Yeah. But it's sometimes it's hard because you're sitting there, sitting there, sitting there, and then all of a sudden, now you got to do something with yeah, it, yeah. right? Yeah. And listen, so, you expected to make that shit too. If it come yeah. to you, you ain't yeah. touched it for. That's your job. For, 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 for it. it's forty-eight minutes a game. If you ain't touched that. 47, you better make that shot yeah, when you man, get it. But, but UD yeah. says this about Miami a lot, and he's, again, he's right. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Playing, for, playing with stars is not for everybody. Yeah. So talk about that, because like, so what was your learning curve there before you left there and went to Boston with playing with Luca? What was your learning curve? Um, I'd probably just say really like, honestly, probably just keeping your mental in check mm. because that was the year I, I really like, that was probably my hardest year in the league. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? From just a mental standpoint and approaching the game. Like I was like, you know, waking up some morning, it's like, bro, I can't even, I don't even feel like going in today. Like mm -hmm. I don't even, we had a, we got a game at night and I'm like, I do not feel like playing tonight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Was it because of what was going on in Dallas or was it because of something else? A little both. Not you know what I'm saying? Multiple, and multiple. you know, you know when something starts happening, it's always a domino effect. Yeah. Something else, something yeah. else is gonna you see it happen in threes. Yeah. And it's <laughs> like, dang, like come on, I gotta catch a break. Yeah. And so I feel like I learned, like I feel like I grew the most like off the court and mentally in Dallas. Like I you know, I was getting into therapy. You know what hmm, I'm saying? Say it again. Yeah. A little therapy. And therapy, I was gonna ask you about that when you said you was challenged mentally. Therapy is what? It's good for yeah, you. That's right. Man. Don't that's don't up. do not Look at therapy in a in a in a negative light, you know what I'm saying. I, and I grew up in a in Oklahoma in the South, so it's like, yeah, there is like be a man, like, yeah. like you don't have emotions, like just figure it out, you know what I'm saying. And that's, and I grew up in a military household too, mm. so it's like you just kind of like eat it, you know, like it is what it is. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I said, but, 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 but listen, I, we we got to talk about this because we got to shout this out now. You grew up in Oklahoma, yeah. Edmonton, right? That's Edmonton. what I say. But OKC is what? Is that close to? Yeah, it's, it's basically like the same North thing. OKC, yeah. So your parents. Yeah. I had a homeboy catch a case in OKC. <laughs> you don't need to get into what kind of case. Yeah, yeah. He called a case in OKC. <laughs> yeah. OG don't really reach out to many people for favors. <laughs> but I reached out to the king right here. And he put me in contact. His parents put me in touch with the right people at the right time. And my man. He spent a little time in OKC, but he, we got him out, we got him home. <laughs> we got him out and we got him home. So I got a shout out, you know what I'm saying, Rich Kid and the Richardson yeah. family, man. Y'all know yeah. I love y'all. Y'all always been family. I appreciate y'all, but you the king around there. Come on, man. Pay, I paid for it all cash. <laughs> 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 yeah, the king around there, for sure, for sure. So how was that growing up there, though? Because it's not very much going on, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, you, you figured it out. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's slow. You know, y'all know. Listen. 
he thinks not, every place outside of Miami, there's not a whole lot going on. Yeah, that's not fair. That's not a fair comparison. Hey, 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 hey. That's a good point, no, no, though. No, no, He's, no, no, that's no. a good I think point. That's a fair assessment of South Dakota and Edmonton. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's Edmond. No, Edmond. I'm sorry, Edmond. I think that's a fair that's assessment Edmonton of South Dakota and Edmond. Crazy. Okay, don't don't do me like that. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm just telling the truth. Pretty pretty accurate, but yeah. yeah nah, but I mean, I'm not gonna lie. It is it's it's real slow, like normal. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the population is a lot, like it's a big population, but spread out. Man, listen, I ordered an Uber Black and they sent me a minivan. It's a black minivan. <laughs> no, it's not a black <laughs> minivan. It was not a. It was a raggedy ass I minivan. Man, I a black I ordered minivan. a. The mother cheated me. I paid a hundred dollar for an Uber Black and they sent me a minivan with a with three teeth in his mouth driving. Was it clean? <laughs> was it clean? It was clean. All right. But it was I mean, not an Uber I mean, Black. I mean, Uber he, Black. Hey, it was not an Uber Black. He slid on Oklahoma real quick, though. He talked about a guy we with three could, teeth picked him up. We, no, we did have a lot of three strays teeth. right now. We did have three teeth, and it was a hey, goddamn hey, minivan. Hey, okay, so y'all take it easy on him when he comes through the city, man. I, listen, right, man. Take listen, it listen, easy on him. Oh, you took me to that place where we got burgers and milkshakes. Roms. I can't even, I don't even eat burgers no more. I'm off red meat, by the way, but back in the day, I used to indulge. I used to go hang out there. Listen, don't do me like that. I hung out with a rich kid. We kicked it. Hold on, hold on. Why did we make that change? Huh? Why did we make that change? What, red meat? Yeah. Cuz I'm 43. How old are you again? Hey, uh, so, so you play for a lot I'm of I'm just games. saying, as we get older, we got to make changes, killer. Yeah, you're right. You're That's right, one of the right. things I changed. I gave up red meat. I Better that than we. Gave, I gave up beer. Okay. You're a damn liar. <laughs> I mean, if we're just going to say You let's got just your say. cup, man. <laughs> uh, so you play for a lot of elite coaches. Yeah. Because mm. so after Boston, you went to where? San Antonio. Yeah. That's where I'm elite. Elite. To. You play for a lot of lead coaches. Give me the the differences between Spo and, and Pop, or the similarities between Po and Spo and Pop, because yeah. to me they're at the top of the the food Creamy chain right now, and they're at the top of the food chain salary wise too. You ain't lying. <laughs> uh, Congrats, by the way. <laughs> Ching. Right. Right. Goodness gracious, I say a similarity between them is accountability. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? They both are very. Which is a foreign language nowadays. People don't understand that word. <laughs> Huh? Who? What? Account what? Who? Yo ass. <laughs> Accountable. Jack. It's a foreign language. I don't even understand that word that's nowadays. It's a, a sticky one. <laughs> yeah, but go ahead. Accountability. But, uh, yeah. So, Pop, I get there and I appreciated this so much. My first day, me and Romeo Langford get traded there. So we go to the airport. Oh, from Boston. We, that's right. Uh -huh. yeah. So we meet the team in Chicago. So we go and, uh, Pop sits us down before film, before anything. He's like, all right, so you're not going to play. And I'm like, all right. He's like, you're probably not going to play until after the All-Star break, though. And we had like four games left. I'm like, mm. I mean, all right, I'll take a break. I'll take a little vacay, whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. So, like, first from the jump, he's shooting it to me straight. Yeah. So I really, Respect. like, I'm like, cool. Like, I can, I can rock with this. And the crazy thing is, as soon as I got to San Antonio and I got to like, you know how I am in, in practice every day, I'm vocal, like I'm yeah. talking, I'm like, I'm trying to liven up the mood. It's like me and Pop was like this, like the first day, you know what I'm saying? He's military, I'm military. Yeah, okay. And I'm coming from heat culture, so I know what it looks like, you know what I'm saying, to have like uh, structure and, and I, how practices should move and how, much urgency you have to approach everything with. Mm. And we had a, our average age on the team was like 23 that year, 22 mm. that year. I'm 28. And so I'm like- You was the vet. I, bro, I was, I turned 29 that year and they calling me OG. I'm like, boy, I am not even 30. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. If you look That's at my crazy. pictures on Instagram, I was hashtagging young OG. That's crazy. But I mean, I, I bought into it because, you know, the you locker room. The road yeah, yeah. And, you know, Pop told me, he was like, I don't need a lot from you. I just need you to be a good vet to these young guys. You know what I'm saying? We'll take care of you. Like, we'll communicate. But as long as you, you know, do the things that we need you to do. And so that was the year where I really learned even more so than I did here, like my third, fourth year when I had to be a leader here. Yeah. But there I was like every day, like yeah. like trying to steer steer the ship, you know what I'm saying? And we went on a run, you know what I'm saying? The last like month of the year, we won like, we went from 12th in the West to ninth. Mm. So we went on a good run and- West always tough. Buddy. The West always. is boy. And I back to Brett Brown from uh, Philly. First day I get there. 
Did he come from San Antonio? Yeah, yeah San Antonio guy. Yeah, he, he was San back San in San Antonio yeah. when I went back. Oh, he ended up being back. And I get traded. And I'm like, oh, man. Like, oh, here we go. So I get there. One of the little video guys like, hey, uh, Brett wants to see you in his office. I'm like, whip your ass. All right. Let's see what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, what's up? I've been so, waiting for this. I go in there. He's like, Josh. This voice is classic. I, I think we need to. I think we need to talk about what what happened and and maybe like, you know, sweep that under the rug and 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 start afresh. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, okay, like we can do that. I agree. And so we sat in there and talked for like 15 minutes about everything, and. After that, we was super cool. Like, suit one of the best dudes I've worked with in the NBA just as a person. And as X's and O's, like, when he don't have that pressure of being a head coach, you know what I'm saying? Cause a lot of people don't understand the pressures and all the extracurriculars yeah. that come with being a head coach in the league. And that's why, you know, some people are better here, some people are better there. And as assistant coach, he was really, like, one of the most important people in the gym every day. Mm. Just from, like, because we was – my second year, we was losing, mm -hmm. getting worked. Yeah. And Brett coming in every day, you know what I'm saying? Same energy, same thing, positive, getting guys going. And, you know, that's that's super important. So, shout out to him. Um, Where'd you go from was, there? I just had one well, before that. Go ahead, go ahead, okay, on. that was a similarity is both accountable. What's the difference? Difference. Yeah. Okay. Not, nothing that's bad, good. but just what's the yeah. difference yeah. between Spo and Yeah, Pop? difference. What would be a difference? You know, you know Spo is like a savant, mm -hmm. a basketball savant. Yeah, like he's basketball, 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 yeah. and that's amazing. And I be trying to, I'll talk to Spo about other stuff, and it's cool. But like, Pop is like the most like personable mm. guy. Really? Yes. And a lot of people don't see that because in the media they like ask me a question. He's like, No. <laughs> yes. They scored more points than us. Get him a yeah, bottle yeah, of wine. He, he, he don't give you much in the interview. Get him a bottle of wine. You get yeah. some real good stories. I'm telling you, we almost started following him around because he got a rule. If you see you out at dinner he on a road trip, it, right? he pay for it. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah, <laughs> so, he got to pay hey, for your hey, shit. Hey, you, you see you out at dinner, you know he got to pay for it. Hey, we're pop at tonight. I heard I'm at, that. I'm at, I'm, at, I'm, at, I'm at dinner with Gorgie one night because I didn't know the rule. I'm, it's me, Gorgie, and KJ, Keldon Johnson. Okay. So we sitting at dinner. We're in like maybe like Toronto, I want to say. So he's sitting there, and I see Gorgie look up, look look past me. We're facing each other. I see him look up. He goes, "Oh hell yeah!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Damn it, man!" I'm like, "What?" He like, "Bro, there go Pop right there. He just walked in. We good tonight." <laughs> I said, boy, I'm getting the tomahawk. I think I, I think y'all should implement that rule next year. With Waiter. <laughs> exactly. Bring right. it in. Yeah, y'all should implement that rule next year with the heat. Man. Just follow Spo around. Bring it in. <laughs> and um, but no, Pop, super personal, super easy to work with. But he has a crazy balance of like militant and like being like nurturing. Yeah. Like mm. kind of like a dad. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He kind of feels like your dad. Oh, I mean, I, quick, quick for me is, you know, I don't know if anybody, you know, people probably know my story, but San Antonio was the first team to offer me, you know, so I, I went to Summer League with the Heat, mm -hmm. um, I played well, and then I went to Summer League with San Antonio, I played well with them, and San Antonio actually offered me a deal first, was um, a one-year deal, second year non-guaranteed, mm -hmm. and then Miami came back and offered me two years deal, two years fully guaranteed, but Pop was the one who, we know how to they don't yeah. want you until somebody else wants you. Yeah. So even though I played well for the Heat, they ain't offered me yeah. until, San Antonio, <laughs> until San Antonio wanted. Leverage yeah. is the exactly. <laughs> so Pop actually kind of kickstarted, you know what I'm saying? My See? first opportunity to be in it. Real one. You know what I mean? And Pop probably spoke to you about yeah. it too, because when I when when I got moved, when I was getting moved, because I I asked you know to get moved for San Antonio, because you know I was turning thirty and they were restarting. Younger. We were restarting everything, you know what I'm saying? And so. Me and Pop just had a good communication all year. You know what I'm saying? That's He's great. like, we've been talking to some teams, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, like, just just keep me in the loop. And he was like, if any time you figure out that you want to stay, like, we'd love to have you. Wow. And I was like, man, like, that means a lot. But, you know, at the end of the day, I'm I'm trying to win. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and I didn't want to, you know, stay and, like, babysit forever. But, you know, I love all those guys that I play with there. Mm -hmm. um, I love the coaching staff. But uh, yeah, and so 
when I got traded to New Orleans, Pop called me. Really? It's like, you know, we found a deal. Okay. And we're uh, we're gonna trade you to New Orleans. We appreciate everything and just let me know, you know, if you ever need anything. And mm. you know, from the start to finish, he was just That's love. Eye to eye, straight. That's love. Was yeah. that was that New Orleans, is that young Zion? I mean, obviously he's still young, but didn't didn't I didn't play with him, no. He was hurt. The he whole was time hurt the whole year. Oh man. Damn. That's been the story. Did you see anything in practice, any glimpse of him? Or he was just hurt. You didn't get to see nothing. I saw him play three on three a few times. Mm. I'm not going to lie. He did a 360 windmill in one of the games. Damn. <laughs> Say what? I was like, a 360 dude. windmill hurt. He in was a game? Coming, he was coming back from In injury. a three on three game? Yes, bro. <laughs> coming back? I said, oh, he's acting crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he's acting crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't do that shit at full strength. 100%. I couldn't do that in my dreams. 360 windmill. First of all, I can't do either one of them separately. <laughs> now you got to add them together? Like, what, Stop it, killer. What are we, what are we Stop talking about? Stop it, killer. We got, listen, we got any family killer in the <coughs> dunk contest for the all of Dunk McDonald's game? No. Or, 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 or in the dunk contest for uh, Midnight Madness for the, for, the, for, the, for the Gators? Stop it, killer. <laughs> you had some bounce. Stop let's, it. Let's, uh, okay, well, it wasn't that kind of bounce. Least favorite place to play. And why? Like as in the city or the team? Combination, can be both. How about let's start with worst city and then we'll go with least favorite team. I'll say the worst, the, none of the cities I played in were like terrible. So this is like the city that I liked the least. I'd probably say New Orleans. Just because I didn't really go outside there. I was only there for two months. Mm. Um, like, I, I didn't really see anything. I don't eat pork. So, half the restaurants I went to were all like, no pork on this fork. Put some extra sausage to go with your sausage. And then, <laughs> and then we put a little bit of uh, chorizo in there, too. We're going to give you some, a side of pasta with your sausage. Yeah, I'm like, hey, I don't even like how that sounded. <laughs> And, yeah. I need, need to clip that one. I was gonna, a, out. I was gonna a yo that whole thing, but no, nah, it's like yo, like we, like it was just, it was, it was very different for me. But it was interesting. Cause I lived on the, I forgot, I think it's called like St. James Street or something like that. Mm. It was like a front street, and it was like one of the streets where they do all the parades and stuff. Ah. And my house that I lived in was like facing that, like on the street. Okay, it had a little porch. I just go sit on the porch and just people watch. DJ Titan. I bring my little thing out. I bring my little thing. Have my little headphones on. So in the midst of all these moving around and, and trades and stuff, you were still working on your shit, working I'm on your craft. I'm in the lab, dog. I'm in the lab. I don't sleep on planes either, though. That's another thing. So on the plane, I, I just organize, DJ, get myself right. So okay. least favorite team to play on? Uh, I'd probably say Dallas. Dallas. But yeah. you was going through a lot of shit, though. That was just yeah. a lot of. Shit coming at you at once yeah and then you had to get into the mental health part of things and make yeah. sure you're your best version so yeah it was on on the court and off the court but it's, it's almost like it was the most important team like the most important year but it was yeah it was the hardest for me for sure mm. Mm. you was able to evolve and, and take that next step yeah exactly but favorite <laughs> best place best place i'd probably say between here and san antonio here in san antonio san antonio you know what? I didn't see that coming. You know, I didn't either. And when I got moved there, I was like, ain't no way I'm about to go live in San Antonio. And I got there, and I was like, this ain't bad. Really? And then I got to like navigating the city and kind of figuring everything out. And you know, I'm from a small You're town. from that area. Yeah, yeah, I'm slow motion. I'm like, this is kind of nice. You know, it's like one big suburb. That's what the city feels like. It's one big old suburb. Give us a hidden gem about San Antonio, because I, I know absolutely nothing. The food, the, the food scene there is solid. Really? Good food oh, trucks. I'm a foodie. Mexican food there is of course know, they it's got basically Mexico, food. you know what I'm saying? That's authentic too. Oh they right there. Man. Yeah. Um it's some it's some cool little spots though. Hangout spots? Yeah. Clubbing, vibe, yeah. like that? Off, lounge. Off, like, lounge night -like? vibes. Really? All right, San Antonio, I Very apologize. Strange. Favorite, favorite. I would have never guessed that. I'm sorry. Favorite team to be on. Favorite team, uh, like which year? I'll probably say. <sighs> probably yeah. my probably my rookie year, man. I was gonna say it got to be the home years. That was so fun. Mm -hmm. my, my rookie year, <laughs> just getting to learn everything. Like I remember my rookie year, I'm sitting on the bus with Justice. We we we're in we're in New York, 
about to leave the Ritz Carlton Battery Park. And we sitting on the bus and Joe Johnson walks on the bus. And like, if anyone knows me, like they know like, I, Joe Johnson was like my guy when I was younger. Like I'm- I saw Joe. By the way, he was so good at that. What? I'm sitting, I'm sitting here looking at Justice like, do he know he on our bus? <laughs> like he, he in the wrong place. I'm not gonna tell him. But he's like, yeah, bro, I don't know. Like, well, what do we do? I'm like, I ain't saying nothing. So I just sat there and I look on my phone and it said Joe Johnson traded to Miami Heat or he, he might've signed with us. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, we're going to the finals. <laughs> 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 I was like, there's no way we just got Joe Johnson. And I didn't say, I remember I didn't say a word to him for like the first like week he was here two weeks just because I was so like starstruck and Joe quiet Joe too though but yeah, he's Joe quiet. quiet too though country boy yeah I can see a, how that guy was a bucket <laughs> so speaking of Joe Johnson and some of the guys you play with at prize we do a segment with a prize pick segment all right they okay. give us free money but what we what we tell people on the prize don't pick be segment. DMing us complaining and going off and talking that crazy because this is your I want you I want to get I want your all-time starting five that you played with in the league that I played with out of all the teams, out of all, all the, the teams you play with, all the players you play, players you play with, you're all time. I can help you out. D Wade and Chris Bosh on there already, right? I'm gonna go D Wade. I'm gonna go D Wade, Luca. Yeah, I forgot. Tatum. Tatum. Joel. Joel. Bosh. That's a hell of a five right there, Jack. Two games without one, there, coach. I'll, I'll come off the bench. I'll be six. You're, oh, you, okay, you're gonna sacrifice. That's a hell. Yeah, of I, a, I would give up my role here. That's, that's a hell of a, a, a gentleman five right there. <laughs> what a gentleman. When you say, I know, you're going back to Joe real quick. Do yeah. You remember like the, the 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 when we used to play wands? Yeah. And Joe used to be and he's a tear folks up. Oh man. my God. So Him and Gerald were two of the best one on one players. Man, I've seen. Listen. Gerald Green used to make me play one on one with them, and I used to hate it. Bro, like, we used he to would play be them. like Rook because he lived in the building next to me. Let's go, let's go play ones, Rook. I'm like, no, please, no. <laughs> okay, let's go, bro. <laughs> bro. All right, all right, where you wanna go? Some of the best, some of the best ones you ever seen, bro. Joe, Gerald Green, D-Wade, some of the best one-on-one -on -one games mm -hmm. you ever seen, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, we, was, we used to get to it. We used to go at it. Listen, and I ain't do nothing but play defense. I ain't want the ball. <laughs> I don't wanna play offense with these offensive machines. <laughs> It'll show my little I ain't got much. Yeah, you know, so just let me just help y'all get y'all right. And sharp, iron sharpens iron. Yeah. I know I can get a stop, goddamn. But let's let me just play some defense in here. Oh yeah, it, it used to get crazy. Birdman. Oh, Birdman was down here. Bird was favorite. there. He would be what well, he's so big cold. old country. So he is so cold. People don't know he can shoot a little. Bit. Man, Birdman man, had know, everything. Man, this is funny. Do you remember Bird limped all the way down the court and then fired the up that three? <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. What, what, what happened? What happened? What happened? Bro, oh my God. <laughs> hold on, what happened? What happened? Yo, yo, we played the Wizards and and it's like toward the end of the game. So they like they put us in and we go in, you know, all of us, we going in like this. Like, I'm about to yeah, give me one. I'm yeah, about to fire that go. Bro, something happens at the other end of the court. I think he tried to block a shot again. Yeah, he, he came knocked down or something. He, he came man. down and he's like, ah. He look at the bench for a sec, and we run it back, and he like limps down the court, and we're like, playing, we're playing four on five for like a smooth, like solid, like seven seconds of the shot clock. <laughs> I'm talking about he limping to the point where I'm thinking they might have to come out. He's gonna take him out, yes. <laughs> like, like you know when you're not trying to put no pressure on it, he like limping, limping. So we get it. Somebody swings it up to him at the top of the key. We thinking he gonna swing it. Yeah, and I'm, we stand on the other side. He catch it. <laughs> Air ball. No, he shot a biscuit. <laughs> he shot a biscuit. Listen, this is yeah, no reflection bro. on Bird. I, this was the frustration. <laughs> this was around the time where, you know, it was a transition going on. <laughs> you know, some of the older guys wasn't getting minutes. Yeah. You know, the younger guys were getting minutes. So we, when you're an older guy, you got to go in at the end of the game. Oh, it's tough. You ain't happy about that. <gasps> no, you ain't. Nobody, none of us wonder how to crank that Chevy up at the end of the game. We've been sitting Damn. over there for all that goddamn time. We old, we ain't loose. So Bird was already pissed off he was in there. Man. You know what I'm saying? So. And he just got hurt down here. Then he just got hurt on some. The man had he one leg. And they swing the ball to him. Swing what? He let it go. Let that fly. <laughs> that right there I knew was like, yeah, okay, he out of here. I was like, oh, this he guy's crazy. Oh, another Birdman story. Good, I love Birdman. Bro, I don't know if you remember this. In Golden State at Oracle, bro, 
we're playing the Warriors. I'm not playing yet. I'm in a suit, so I'm I'm observing. I'm watching everything. So the the half ends, and Bird's like on the bench, and the and the clock's going down, and he's sitting there like this. He probably, by the way, he's probably on his like, fourth cup of coffee at the time. Oh, I'm like, so, I'm like drank that mud now. What's wrong with this? What's this guy's deal? <laughs> the, the horn goes off. He goes. Woof, it just sprints to the locker room, like death sprint. I'm like, it ain't no way he just did that. So I walk back, I get back there. I see him like huddled in his locker. We're playing against the Warriors, like yeah. Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, yeah. Draymond, like all these people. Yeah. Like if you go in, you gotta like do something. Yeah. This man is sitting in his locker like this, huddled over, eating a double chili cheeseburger. <laughs> at halftime, <laughs> at halftime, Man was hungry. I'm like, I'm like, yo, if you go in, you I'm not gonna go finish that sentence. So. There you go. There you go. This is when you know where is like, okay, I'm ready to get out. Yeah, I like, yeah, he done. He, he's tapped. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm, he's ready. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> All right, I see it. Listen, he, he listen. Oh, I love he coaching can well you mentally as well. I love that. Well, man. you mentally. I love man. that. Man. So right. yeah. Well, listen. Um, we got a bunch of fan questions because here at the OGs, we are men of the people. Mm hmm. I don't know what this one is, but I can't wait to hear it. I want a backstory of Hassan oh. running in circles in the locker room. Okay. Oh, that. <laughs> he uh, so he was signed with Nike, and so we were like, I think it was, was that during the season, or, or that might have been right before season started, right before training camp. Yeah. And like, we in the yeah. gym working out, and. He just got a big old, a big giant box of shoes. You know, they send you the shipments. Yeah. He like, oh yeah, whatever, blah, 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 blah. And, and I'd have been making fun of him that year for wearing them big old like LeBrons. Like, you know, earlier yeah, like yeah, LeBrons yeah, was yeah, like yeah. bricks. Yeah. I'm like, boy, you got them fat ass shoes on. You can't move, move your feet in the ball screen, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so he, get, he pulls out this pair of Hyperdunk 2008s. Best basketball shoe ever. You know, the narrow ones. Uh -huh. He put them on. I said, boy, you look kind of fast with those on. He said, I look fast. I said, oh, you look fast. <laughs> you just gassing them up? You look fast. He you said, look fast. yeah. He said, all right, watch this. No. He and he just literally just starts running <laughs> circles in the locker room. <laughs> so I take my phone out. I start recording him. And I hit it. I'm like, and it just went viral. It was funny though. No, that was funny. The look on his face, the way he was. Yeah, he was like, it's a story about Spo making you make a hundred threes in a row true during the season. Nah, it wasn't a hundred in a row. I say, damn. It was. And there wouldn't be. Everyone would still be sitting. I still be in the gym. All of us. Come on, bro. What are you talking about? No. So. I came in the league, I could not shoot when I came in the league. I was a straight athlete, defender, you know that. Like, defender, I, yeah. I could. And so I'm in the, I go in the gym on an off day, and there's literally no coaches, no one in there. So I find an intern. I'm like, you want to come rebound? He's like, yeah. So I go up there. You know, I think I'm, I'm working. Like, I'm here. Nobody here. I'm doing my thing. So I'm shooting threes. I'm about done. I'm like, all right. So... I look over and I see Spo walk in. I'm like, huh, okay. So I keep shooting. He's like, here, keep going. He's like, get in the corner, 100 threes. I'm like, damn, coach, I'm, I'm already, I was already done. Like, what are we, you see me on the camera. You know they got the camera. They're watching everything. everything. It's eye in the sky. They're like, watching everything. Like, all right, whatever. So I go around, I make like, I make like 60 out of 100, which is awful, like wide open. And he's like, Give me a 10. I'm like, damn, what? And you know what a 10 is. Mm -hmm. Down, back, down, yeah. back, down, back, down, back, down, back. I'm like, this dude is wilding right now, but all right. So I do it. I get back. He's like, going again. I'm like. Another 100? Another set yeah. of 100? Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, you got to make 70 before you get out of here. I'm like. By the way, when you're a rookie, the answer is always yes. Yeah. It's always yes. <laughs> Voluntary, yeah. mandatory. Exactly right. The answer is yes. So I'm like, all right. So I go again. I make like 65. I'm like, it's like, give me another 10. I'm like, it's no way, bro. So I run it again. I come back. I'm like, 
He's like, we're going right now. I'm like, coach, I'm, come on now. I'm going to pass out. I'm like, he's like, you got to compete. I'm like, it ain't no one in here for me to compete with. What are you talking about? <laughs> he's like, with yourself. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So I go again. Bro, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on like 66 for like 90, like 95. Bro, I have 69 for 99. Clank the last oh. one. Oh! I'm like, ah, I'm saying every word you can think of. I'm, I'm throwing the ball. I'm like, this is a ball, man, whatever. Give me another 10. I'm like, so I run it. I get back. I finally make 70 the next time. And he's like, he kind of talks to me. He's like, this is how you got to, like, approach it. This is, if you want to play, cause I'm, not, I'm not playing yet. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, if you want to play, you better be ready, and this is how you got to approach it. You got to, like, out. work out. Like, you got to work harder. Because mm -hmm. I thought I was working hard, but is it, I guess it was a thing. Like, I just had a slow pace to my workouts. <laughs> and he was like, this is how you got to approach this from now on. I love that story. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hell yeah. I love that I story. can't ask that question. Which one? Nah, you can't ask that. I can't ask that question. That's that dumb shit. Yeah, I can't ask that. I ain't question. answering that. What's the best performance? Which, which fan base embrace you? Which fan base embrace you the most? Honestly, I mean, besides Miami, San Antonio. San Antonio. San Antonio. Like I would make threes. You know, I do this when I make threes. The whole crowd doing this in San Antonio. Okay. When I even shoot, before I even go in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm checking the game. People are like, Jay Ridge, come on, Jay Ridge. Like, we love you. Like, I'm in the streets. Right, San Antonio. Going, going to Starbucks. Yeah, I credit. Like, it's San Antonio love basketball, though. Yeah, they do. As a city, they know, they know basketball. They yeah. do. That makes sense. What's the best performance you've ever seen from a player on your team? Ooh, we. we everybody know this story. Yeah, Purple boy. shirt, man. <laughs> Purple shirt in the playoffs my rookie oh, year. Oh, that's in uh, Charlotte. In Charlotte. Yeah, was it, in was Charlotte. this game? Purple shirt, man, got this torn was, up. This was game six in yeah. Charlotte because we was coming home next game. And this was an elimination game. Yeah, that was elimination. And we was, well, I was, we was down. Way with the money. We, we had uh, made our mind up that we were going to empty the clip that night. Yeah. Well, that was around the time I was playing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We had to made our mind up. We finna empty the clip tonight, Jack. We let, let, it, no. let it ride. They don't save it. And it was crazy because I was getting minutes, like, deep into that game. And I'm, like, on the court. I might as well been in the stands with like some popcorn. Cause I'm, <laughs> it got to the point D Wade was killing. I'm not gonna say his name, but it was a few of them that was getting all these buckets, and it was a few. And he had like 25 points in the last like 11 minutes of the game, yeah. 10 minutes of the game, and he's making fadeaways. D Wade don't much shoot threes. Yeah. D Wade's shooting step back threes, turning around, looking at this dude on the sideline all the way back, like. I was like, no way. And I'm literally standing on the wing every time down the court, throwing in the ball. I'm literally just like, what's he going to do now? There's yeah, nothing better work. watching one of them dudes do that stuff. He must have swung the ball to me once. I was like, <laughs> what, what you, you doing? Pass it to me for. <laughs> what are we going to do that you can't do at this point? <laughs> and he, yeah, he hit that game like 36. We won, and we won the won series. It, came back and won the series. We were yeah. down 3-2. Yeah. I remember Pat talked to us before shooting around that morning, too. Yeah. I don't remember what he said, but. I remember me and D-Wade was just like, yeah, we're going to empty the clip tonight, Jack. That was a crazy we'll Save game. it. There's no reason to save it. That's going to go down in history, for sure. Yeah, it was big time. Yeah, Favorite segment of the, of the show, UD, you know what you got? The OG advice. OG Hit him with something today, man. The Preach OG, to him a little bit. The you OG got? advice. Hmm. You already gave him some when you, when you brought him in here. What did you say to him when you brought him in here? What I say? I said no, no. Shit. When he came as your rookie, what'd you tell him then? Oh yeah. What I say? I don't know. Uh, said well, I don't, we well. said it at the beginning. Yeah, you did. I forgot. Yeah. A lot of things. <laughs> See, by getting old. What'd look. What I said, killer. I don't remember either, coach. God damn. I'm it's 44. Old, though. I'm I'm older than you. <laughs> two old motherfuckers in here. <laughs> What's your OG advice for the people at the crib, coach? OG advice for today. Yeah. Huh. Health is wealth. Um, mm, yes, it is. That's the OG advice for today, man. Don't be ashamed to reach out for help so you can be your best version. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about being judged. Just worry about taking care of yourself and being the best version of yourself that you can be. It is not a weakness to seek help when it comes to mental health. 
It's the OG advice for the day. Cali, get yourself some help it, if you need it. That's good stuff. If you don't need it, get it anyway, because you probably do. <laughs> you just ain't got no self-awareness. You just, you just, you don't, just don't know don't it know yet. Yeah. Go get some help. Well, Jay, man, DJ. Rich, oh, appreciate man. you, dog. Don't Thank pull you. up. June twenty second, pull up. When we doing the Soho? When we doing the Soho? June twenty second. June twenty second. Nine p.m. You got, you got SLS when? SLS the twenty sixth. Soho 22nd. July fourth also. Ooh, you got a Soho July fourth too? Come on, man. man what's July? Shit. Fourth of July. I'm popping fireworks. Big. That's big. Come on, Afro beats, house, hip hop, R and B, oh. disco, whatever you want. I got it. Man. Hire me. Tune it in. Ain't cheap. You hear? You hear? Hire me. I ain't cheap. <laughs> and Billy. listen, and titties are allowed. <laughs> They're allowed <laughs> and encouraged. <laughs> and encouraged. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> oh, OG's out before we get talking too much about it. Appreciate y'all, man.